me the lake uh, is the heart of Ballarat. There are children that have not experienced water in our lake and that's to me is tragic. I think most people in Ballarat would remember Lake Wendaree as a place to share fun times with family and friends, to have a picnic on the foreshore and to just generally gather and recreate. There's some people who like to challenge themselves and run around the lake and get their best time. For me it was more about sharing special times with family and friends and uh, our children still have wonderful memories of playing up there, feeding the swans, being part of the Begonia Festival and uh, doing all the fun kid things that you do at the lake. To me Lake Wendaree has always been the, the major focus of social activity and I guess uh, recreational activity and it's been a, a great component that I believe uh, binds our whole community together. So I've been in Black for all, oh, 17 years going on now. Yeah. So that was one of the attractions for, I suppose, coming to Ballarat was the lake. Certainly was a point and place we always brought the kids down to. You know, the rowing regattas and uh, international competition and to have people that would travel to Ballarat because of our lake it's, uh, there's something about our lake that, uh, that draws a lot of people here. Uh, I've been in Ballarat since 1976, so I'm not quite a local. Um, but in those days I can remember the lake being an absolute focal point uh, for the community. Lots of people running, fishing, rowing, etc. It is steeped in heritage and it's just amazing to look back at many of the, the photographs and the footage from Lake Wendaree when it was full of water and, and what it did mean as a as a place for the community to come together and, and you know, share time with each other, with their family and their friends and recreate. Sure, I remember um, when we were young we used to come up here in summer and ride our bikes off the jetties and then have to duck dive to find your bushy afterwards. Yeah, it was always good bringing the kids up to the fireworks and watching them go over the water. It was just a really cool place to come and hang out whenever we were in Ballarat. Um, there was always activity here at the lake. Um, they had great festivals here, markets, all that sort of stuff. It was a really cool place to be. Lake Wendaree unfortunately has suffered heavily because of the drought. There's been some changes in the catchment because it has a very small catchment and that has limited the inflow. Uh, but obviously the major impact is the drought and we've, we've got to be smarter as to how we get water into the lake. My school used to do rowing in the lake but now there's no water in there so they have to go to the Geelong. It's a bit of a pain when you can't use the lake to train even though it's right here. For like the past four years there's been no water so I've never rode on the lake and it makes it a bit difficult competing against schools from Melbourne and interstate who are on water all the time and we've just got nothing. It just makes it a bit difficult trying to get kids involved, telling them, oh, if you want to train we have to travel an hour and a half, hour and a half three hours to get on water. I can't believe people used to swim on the lake because there's no water. My parents used to tell me that they were been fishing and swimming in the lake, but I don't believe them. A couple of years ago, the lake started to dry out and we had an increase in wildlife rescue calls. We had issues of the um, swans having their babies and then flying off. We had many, many rescue calls for wallabies caught in the mud in the lake. Um, and these all caused major, major um, issues for, for us as a wildlife team as well as for our wildlife. My name's Ian Rossiter, I'm the Director of Sustainability and I've been involved in the Lake Wendery management and the water supply for around 18 years. So the plan is to start introducing um, treated wastewater from the North Treatment Plant um, very soon and that will actually make a huge difference in terms of tipping the, uh, the volume in our favour of actually creating recovery. At the moment the lake is receiving approximately an identical amount of water from stormwater that we harvest and from its catchment as to the annual rate of evaporation. So hence the lake has, for the last few years, wetted up during the winter and spring period and then dried out over summer. Over the last years, Council together with Central Highlands Water and the State Government have really worked collaboratively around uh, finding the right level of investment and money to, to put into this particular project. And, and what that has meant is, over a long period of time, undertaking all of the planning, 
uh, all of the environmental planning around refilling the lake, uh, what that means, how we need to go about it, the most effective way to do that, and the quickest way to do that. Because remember, you know, we're not about waiting for the climate to provide us with a solution. You only need to look around to see what the climate has provided us, which is why now we need to, to intervene and we need to provide water for, for Lake Wendaree. So there has been uh, years and millions of dollars invested into all of the infrastructure to get water to Lake Wendaree and get the lake itself prepared for reintroducing water back into it. So if you think about a graph about the amount of water coming into the lake from rainfall falling out of the sky and water coming into the catchment from various areas including the stormwater harvesting projects that we've done, we can expect to see water coming in through the winter and spring period from rainfall and then starting to see losses every summer and summer and autumn period through evaporation. At the moment the evaporative loss is around about the same amount of water that's coming into the lake, hence it has been drying the last few summers. But we are now in a situation with two megalitres of water coming in per day from the North Treatment Plant, we start to tip the balance so that we have this gradual process of the lake moving away from being a, a water body which recedes every summer to one that's starting to uh, move towards filling and spilling, which will take several years. Central Highlands Water is providing approximately 20% of the total volume of uh, the lake's resource and that's coming by the new uh, water treatment plant reuse plant that we're building and have constructed at Ballarat North. Basically you've got class B water coming from uh, the sewage treatment plant, it goes into the new plant, from there we have ultrafiltration which takes out a lot of the, uh, the matter that was in the, the class B water and from there it then goes through a UV disinfection which is ultraviolet disinfection. Uh, we have a two, two million litre uh, capacity tank at the site, the reuse water will be pumped into that tank and then trickle fed through uh, approximately four kilometres of pipeline via Paul's wetland to the lake. And we guarantee that the water is class A plus by a, a number of barriers that are in the treatment plant and uh, we will be doing regular testing to make sure that that water is at the agreed quality. The lake, it's a big lake. It will take around five and a half years to refill. Realistically, um, we're talking immense volumes of water over a long period of time mixed with stormwater which we need rain for so we're reliant somewhat on the environment but the, the water levels in Lake Windaree will gradually rise and fall over a five year period but continue to rise to a point where the lake will be full again. The second point is that there will be sufficient water in the lake sometime in the next year or so for us to actually complete the dredging work of the rowing course and that will deepen the rowing course by half a metre. It is a massive area, it is 138 metres wide, it's 2,080 metres long, so even if the lake isn't full we will have this long channel in the middle of the lake which will be suitable for training for a whole range of aquatic sports. You know what we will start to see is as the water comes in we will see the bird life start to return, we will see, see people coming back. As it gets deeper we will see um, sporting, you know, aquatic activity starting to return to the lake as well. As we complete works around the rowing course we will see rowing return to Lake Wendaree so there will be a gradual build of all of these fantastic community events over that period of time uh, until when you know we can stand here in, in five and a half years time and, 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 and no doubt look over uh, a lake that is full. It is, it, it's important to the city of Ballarat and it's important to Ballarat that the sport of rowing develops back in, into the level it was in the pre-2002 uh, category when prior to that per head of population the city of Ballarat had the highest representative of athletes competing for our country in Australia per head of population. I know when we last year just had uh, a small covering across the whole lake and um, you know the, the excitement within the community of Ballarat, people had a spring in their step as if it were you know the, the first day of spring. For many families they invite uh, visitors and, and uh, friends from Melbourne or wider to come and experience a, a family reunion at the lake. So when people come to Ballarat now and, it's, and the lake's not full, they are, they're very sad. They say, I can't believe what's happened to your lake in Wendaree. Um, and uh, so it's extremely important that we reinstate that wonderful, valuable asset, that icon that Ballarat is so renowned for. I found the lake has been a great source of uh, 
Yeah, personal reflection for me and for my family. And, and as my boys grow up, I'm sure they're going to find opportunities to enjoy the lake along the way, in the, in the same way that I did. I want to be able to come here and feed the ducks. This is setting up Lake Wendery and the Ballarat community for hundreds of years into the future. I mean, today it's a cold and, and blistery day here in Ballarat, but come summer when this lake is full and there's people around and there's activity and there's the first rowing carnival and all of that, it will be worth it in the end. It will bring people back to Ballarat. The council has understood the enormous responsibility. There's been many, many projects that have been done to date and now it is absolutely critical. We take the next step and we ensure that the lake is filled and it continues to be full in the future. This can't be a short-term fix. We don't want to be in this position again in the near future. Whatever we put in place must be long-term and it must be able to address the issue, the critical issue of having Lake Wendery full to capacity. Yeah, even though it's not going to be full like within f next few months or anything, like three or five years, it's still, as long as the lake's full, we're all looking forward to that, Heather Lake back on the lake. So I think it just, yeah, it's a great thing. Uh, this project has been jointly funded by Central Highlands Water, uh, the State Government and uh, the City of Ballarat and we look forward to uh, partnering them to ensure that the lake returns to its former glory. As a wildlife carer and a wildlife rescuer, to see the lake re-established um, re is, is um, just fantastic. Look, there are a lot of people who thought that we were never going to be able to do this. And there were a lot of people who had tremendous ideas about how we should go about doing this. But at the end of the day, the important, the important fact remained that something needed to be done.